Do you see China's reforms affecting Hong Kong's IPO outlook in a longer term perspective, if especially we, we continue to see political unrest here in the city? No, I think uh, uh, one thing people uh, sometimes do not fully appreciate that uh, um, the market uh, are really mutually reinforcing and mutually helping each other. So the more open China is, the more opportunities we actually have. Obviously, you know, when they are more open, you have slightly different opportunities when they are more closed. So it's not about a, a binary thing that if they're more open, then people are not coming here. And, uh, you know, we are very differentiated in our roles, in our functions, and in our, you know, mutual, uh, you know, complementary strength. So I'm, you know, as long as we remain agile, we remain resilient, and we remain relevant, we will always be able to solve the problems that they couldn't solve at a particular time. And when they're able to solve those problems, we're going to move on to solve other problems that they are. As long as China continue to open, and as long as that we are able to remain on a competitive distance and a differentiation, we will always be succeed together. Is this a priority to you to get some of these stocks included on the Stock Connect, especially that some of these companies might be included in the Hang Seng pretty soon too? Uh, yeah, I think uh, that there are things that we can do here in Hong Kong, including uh, you know uh, some of the changes in the uh, uh, the system and the, the rules that will allow them to be potentially designated uh, slightly different from its current form. But that may or may not necessarily uh, uh, be sufficient uh, for us to reach agreement with our friends uh, uh, in Beijing and Shanghai and Shenzhen. But I'm sure um, this is something that. Uh, uh, is in the horizon, and I don't want to give you a specific time, but uh, it's coming. We just got this draft bill of this national security legislation, and, and the central government has confirmed that they can actually trump the Hong Kong legal system when it comes to national security issues. How are you maintaining or reassuring investors right now that this is not going to be the, as big of a deal or at least address the concerns that they have right now? Well, there is going to be absolutely short-term anxieties and short-term, um, uh, you know, uh, discomfort, because this is not something that people are used to before. And also, in light of all the massively geopolitically sensitive time that we live in, this will be, you know, so you know, it's fully understandable. But I think if anybody who really understands Hong Kong, understand China's, um, you know, overall traditional, um, you know, philosophical approach, you know, in Hong Kong, they should really, uh, you know, uh, pretty easy conclude that ultimately the long-term impact is limited because, you know, two systems, one country, two systems absolutely works for the best interests of China. And I think uh, no matter what happens, no matter what uh, uh, the U.S., uh, you know, government to will do, you know, in terms of its conflict with China, and um, I think ultimately, and even with the national security law introduction, Hong Kong will remain to be the most international, the most open, the most free, the most, uh, um, you know, Western uh, market of China. So maybe slightly today, you know, we used to be people think, used to know us as the most uh, Chinese, inter, you know, kind of an international market. Maybe tomorrow we will still be the most international and most Chinese market.